Uh, good morning. Uh, this is going to be our guide to digitizing VAT in 2021, uh, looking at uh, specifically how we're able to improve that function uh, through automation and technology. Uh, I'm Guy Stigox. I'm one of the tax technology consultants at uh, Tax Systems, uh, and I'll be taking us through this today. Uh, I think we've got the agenda up next, so that'll give us a good idea of what's going to be happening. So yeah, so we're going to have three sort of main areas that we'll be looking at. We'll be starting off with looking at kind of where we are today, uh, how we've seen technology uh, accelerating across the function and the different sort of adoption rates and uh, uses that we've seen. Uh, we're then going to look at some of the tax function trends, uh, how kind of automation can and is being driven in those tax functions and the benefits it brings. Uh, we're then going to look at some of the challenges around uh, specifically VAT, as well as some of the other, um, the other sort of areas of that function. And then finally, we're going to have a look at some of uh, kind of the lessons we've learned and kind of the benefits we've seen uh, across um, across sort of automation and digitization projects. Uh, we're then going to have a look at briefly in the second section, sort of how bad digitization will look uh, and the benefits it brings. And then finally, uh, in the last part of the session, uh, we'll have a look a quick look at AlphaVAT that will demonstrate some of these uh, sort of benefits that I've been mentioning uh, and sort of kind of allow you to visualize some of those changes and. Uh, the benefits it brings. Uh, so first off, uh, digitization is already happening. Uh, over the past 12 to 18 months, we've seen a significant shift in the appetite for digitization across businesses. And I mean, not only has this been spurred on by changes in work patterns that have required sort of successful business collaboration, even when working from home and in various offices and spaces, uh, but Broadly, there's been a much uh, there's been a significant move to cloud and SaaS-based software. Uh, we've seen this uh, across a lot of sectors and across a lot of different types of businesses, small, large. Uh, the requirements really are um, sort of accelerating and increasing every day. Uh, you can see just a few examples here. Uh, we've seen that UK SaaS revenue has doubled more in, uh, in more than doubled in the last three years. Um, AWS and Microsoft Azure cloud centers are now accounting for up to 94% of workloads in 2021. And also, unsurprisingly, Microsoft Teams meetings minutes per day have absolutely exploded in the last uh, year or so, uh, going up from uh, sort of quadrupling in the last 18 months. Now, the next bit that's really key for us is not only is digitization happening, but um, the tax function itself uh, is perfectly fit for the same sort of digitization and automation, automation that we're seeing elsewhere. Uh, it's really ripe for this. So we've got two studies here, uh, the first from PwC and the second from McKinsey, both conducted in the last 12 months. And they were looking to investigate sort of the potential for automation across businesses in the various sort of departments and sectors. Now, we can clearly see that PwC results show that tax accounting has a 27% chance for automation. Uh, meaning that there can be obviously significant time-saving opportunities. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, you can see McKinsey actually show that they, they believe that 50%, 57% believe that tax is highly, if not fully, automatable. Uh, and that's something that we're, we're seeing and we feel as well. Um, for too long, a lot of ta the tax functions being very manual driven. It's been surrounded by manual processes and it's really lacking uh, the, maybe the, the spend that some other departments are offered. Uh, to take a, take that opportunity to actually build in some automation and build in some better processes, uh, reduce those key person dependencies, things like that. <clears throat> now, um, because tax is such a fantastic candidate for digitization and automation, we just need to make sure that we've got the right tools to do so. Now, one of the other things we're seeing is not only are we seeing, obviously, a shift in the use of technology and a move away from uh, manual processes uh, and uh, kind of the, the kind of Excel user within these sort of tax functions. But um, more broadly than that, we're actually seeing a, a shift in the way that to finance, function, finance functions are actually working. Um, well, we've got this as a little example here, or the flipping of the pyramid, because rather than sort of spending a lot of time on sort of transaction processing, the manual side of things, um, reports uh, sort of a middle amount of time on the reporting and compliance, getting those in at the right time and getting the correct reports accurate reports into the right bodies, and then having a little bit of time left at the end to do some insight and sort of value add and look at some analytics. Um, we're seeing a big shift away from that. We're seeing the kind of benefits that automation brings. We can spend significantly less time on those sort of manual uh, transaction processing steps, 
Um, we have sort of the machines of machine learning to help do that for us. And instead that really frees us up to reduce the burden on our reporting as well and spend a lot more time on insight and action, looking at that value add, making sure that there are improvements that we can be making to the process that we're doing actually, that do we have full confidence in our figures? Uh, do we believe that everything we're doing is, uh, is as accurate as it can be? Um, so it's a real change for not only how we're uh, conducting the sort of finance function and what the focus on the focus of time is, but actually, um, are, are we kind of doing the best we can with our time? And is there any more value that we can pull out of this process, uh, with a process that has previously been relatively transactional? So next, uh, we're looking at sort of today's processes. And, and this is just a typical process that we see in the majority of businesses, um, whether it's sort full of VAT, corporation tax, whatever it may be. Uh, and essentially what we believe and what we've uh, sort of learned from our experience is that ultimately today's processes are unsustainable. Um, whether it's due to sort of uh, regulatory bodies changing their requirements, whether we have MTD or upcoming uh, MTD for VAT or upcoming MTD for CT, um, all of these changes and the kind of appetite towards uh, digitization uh, from sort of governing bodies is uh, ever increasing and our existing sort of processes aren't going to be able to keep up with their kind of ever accelerating um, kind of ideas. Uh, so what we can see here is this is kind of a, a typical process that we find. Uh, we've got a, a number of sort of uh, source systems, ERP packages, accounting, uh, finance packages that are essentially housing that data initially. Uh, these are then exported into a number of Excel reports that are then fed into a combination of Excel and software to prepare tax returns, provisions, and all various other provisions. You can see we've got back C by C here. Uh, now, these are obviously then eventually submitted into various formats to the various bodies. Uh, but this process of having individuals responsible for different Excel sheets, responsible for different sort of specific parts of that submission process, <coughs> Um, and having multiple different sort of uh, key person uh, dependencies on these Excel sheets. You might have a, some person that created the Excel sheet 10 years ago and it hasn't really been looked at that since. It's ultimately going to be an unreliable way to move forward into a digitized world, especially with uh, these upcoming digitizations for tax bodies. And now, another issue that we often find uh, obviously compounded by that is that whilst Excel is obviously a fantastic tool and used by, uh, from our understanding at least, 78% of businesses, especially within the VAT space, um, it has inherent risks and inherent issues surrounding it. So not only are spreadsheets just risky, um, we have a high risk of human error by using spreadsheets. Um, if we're sort of transposition errors or if we're cutting and pasting things or we're relying on formulas or macros that have been built, uh, there's just an inherent level of risk there. Uh, on top of that, if you are using spreadsheets as a key part of those sorts of processes, you have time spent maintaining those spreadsheets um, that can really, really uh, take away from the other benefits that might be brought by uh, a more automated part of the process. Uh, on top of that, um, you have, as I mentioned earlier, those key person dependencies. So you might have only one person within the business that understands how a particular process works or how to update a particular spreadsheet or what the macros are actually doing. That's something we find so often. Someone leaves the business and all of a sudden there's a 50 page, uh, 50 sheet sort of Excel that needs uh, weeks of sort of decoding and recoding to understand exactly what's going on there. And we also found that sort of most fact calculations themselves have errors. Uh, we find that uh, within those uh, Excel sheets, there are, there are inherently just errors throughout them, uh, as you would expect from something that's entirely derived from sort of manual work. Um, we see transposition errors and formula macro errors all of the time, uh, and also to a sort of a blind reliance on the idea that spreadsheets are mirroring that ERP data because there is a lack of time for review. Uh, and finally, um, we find that 80% of those processes, uh, that time is spent during um, sort of manual steps. So whether that's consolidating data from multiple sources, uh, calculating complex adjustments like reverse charge, bash exemption, uh, posting corrections at a transactional level, um, again, reviewing and maintaining that spreadsheet with a formula integrity, uh, and then finally, leaving very little time at the end for review. So 
In May 2021, uh, we conducted a couple of surveys, uh, one with financial director and one with accountancy age, uh, to really look at what uh, businesses wanted to improve about their processes uh, and where the key just kind of areas for improvement were and the issues they found. Uh, and so these really kind of look to um, kind of go through the aims and priorities of tax functions and their appetite for automation in tax, specifically around MTD. So um, you can see here that we found that about 58% by their own self-admission found that there were some errors or some inaccuracies within their VAT process and their VAT return. Uh, and of those organisations, 36% of them uh, spent more than 25 days a year on those returns. And 13% spent even more than that, 50 days a year. Uh, the top concerns, as you would imagine, were covered accuracy, key person dependencies, and the management of those spreadsheets. And then really, in the long run, uh, we saw from the account stage review that we wanted MTD to enhance the process. It wasn't um, a compliance aspect. I mean, that is obviously important. But whilst you're going through the steps of uh, updating your systems for that sort of digital compliance, why not take that opportunity and why not take that kind of that bookmarked spend to actually improve the process, uh, to build accuracy and to focus on a, sort of making it more modern and more acceptable. <clears throat> now, on top of that, what we've then seen as a result of the sort of 200 implementations of VAT projects that we've done is very much in line with that. So we've seen that most organisations had errors, 50% of which had a meaningful impact on their submission, whether that's due to Excel, whether that's due to the data that's being exported from their source systems, or simply the way in which it's consolidated and brought forward to the final return. Uh, the workload for actually preparing those returns is incredibly high, up to uh, sort of 50 or 60 days a year spent actually preparing them. Then, as I said earlier, 80% of that time is spent is preparing, consolidating, and ensuring that spreadsheet integrity itself, leaving so little time at the end of the process for review and for value-added opportunities. Uh, we also have sort of um, sort of log jams with rolling forecasts and monthly reporting, uh, and often teams working to the wire for those submissions, if not completing them the day before or a few days before. So this is really kind of the, the vision we have for the future of tax functions. Um, rather than having that kind of separation of a, a single sort of section of exporting data into a various sort of a number of um, calculation layers, whether that's uh, sort of Excel or software, and then eventually being signed off and submitted. Um, we think that uh, you, the idea is that you kind of dri drive towards a single sort of uh, solution, a single sort of data for all obligations and where we have these ERPs and accounting packages feeding into a data lake with tax calculation tools pulling what they need when they need to calculate the returns. Uh, we can have experts pulling the data and making sure it's in a good, good state. You can see there in the Excel download workbook section, the tax data layer. We then have other individuals working in the tax calculation layer alongside software, alongside automation to make sure that the data is being pulled through in the right way, and being calculated correctly. And then finally, we have so much time left at the end for review, analytics, and sign off. So to make sure that that workflow is there, we can review and support the process before submission. And again, allow much more time to that value add. So at digitalization, what does it look like? So the challenges that we most commonly see with um, that processes uh, and that are preventing them from automation and preventing them from digitization are these five key areas. So whether that's VAT groups, uh, partial exemption, international aspects, so things like having multiple currencies running through the process, reverse charge, uh, multiple data systems, so this is a sort of large volumes of unstructured data from multiple ERP packages, finance packages, things like that, or seeing mixed rates across the board. Uh, all of these five items present different sets of challenges within sort of a uh, sort of a manual process, uh, but can all be overcome uh, through automation. And uh, this is another sort of uh, a step through an existing sort of that process to look at exactly kind of where the various kind of buckets of work are required as part of that that process. Uh, and you can see in the middle here, these three orange tabs are exactly where the benefit can really be recognized. So 
we've got the incoming back treatment and we've got the invoices posted into our accountancy software. But then when we start taking those uh, transactions out and putting them in Excel, this is where we find that um, we have that first kind of opportunity for some benefits. Um, so through software, we can take away the steps required of putting that data from multiple sources into a single one. We can automate that data consolidation. We can do things like automated error and anomaly detection. So posting corrections and uh, reviewing transactions and flagging uh, potential errors, issues, uh, problems. Uh, all without um, any manual intervention required. So really taking away that initial sort of line by line um, sort of monotonous work of reviewing those transactions before you even start thinking about calculating the return itself. We then also can kind of, a lot of the time we find that uh, clients will tend to have a set of data checks that they like to review. They will go through as part of the process uh, and having those data checks in Excel and reviewing them manually is great, but do you know what can be done? We can, we can digitize those, we can automate them. <clears throat> Next, um, when we're actually calculating the VAT return and we're putting the time into getting those numbers in the correct boxes, uh, this is another opportunity for sort of huge areas of improvement. If it's being done with an Excel as a manual process, there's a massive opportunity for user error. Uh, but again, with automation, we can actually codify the tax logic. So not only is the software automatically kept up to date with regulatory changes, but um, there's no there's no opportunity for someone accidentally posting uh, sort of an incorrect value or updating a formula and putting in a minus rather than a plus accidentally, and that's throwing everything off. And there's really no way of telling with an Excel that the formula has been calculated correctly unless you dig into it with a lot of detail. Uh, so really kind of wrapping it in an environment that is a sort of bound by tax logic and constantly updated and reviewed really helps to improve that accuracy. And um, obviously the primary part, as we've been talking about here, 80% of time spent on those Excel files preparing the returns. With software, you can completely automate the preparation of them. You don't need to be spending that time pulling figures into the right line boxes and doing those adjustments. Um, the software to help you do that for you. And then finally, uh, it's those complex adjustments that I mentioned earlier, things like partial exemption, things like reverse charge, postponed vote, that are taking so much time that really don't need to. Finally, uh, this is uh, kind of feeds into what we're seeing over and over again with these reviews and with the data that we're pulling, is that uh, so the finance functions want to be spending more time on analytics. They want to be spending more time building confidence in those figures and reviewing them and have don't have to work to the wire to get those submissions in. Uh, and so that's a huge part, um, the insight and audit section that we think is again, really ripe for automation. Um, with analytics, we can look at sort of period and yearly comparisons that are automatically generated and means we don't have to go in and pull things down into sort of pivot tables in an Excel and generate those for ourselves. We've got a digital audit trail across the entire function. So not only do we not have to worry about, okay, who made these changes, when they made them? We can see all of that information. We can don't have to worry about sort of digital linking problems, whether they come from HRC. And again, as part of an audit or control system, it really bolsters that. And then finally, um, we can do other things such as sort of transaction level reporting and automated transactional treatment where we might have business entertaining that needs blocking or transactions that needs excluding from the return before the eventual submission. And just to kind of bring that into the real world, these are some of the benefits we've seen across those projects. So reporting areas ranging from half a million to 15 million have been uncovered and rectified due to sort of unrecorded manual adjustments. Um, compliance workflows are reduced by upwards of 70%. And that's because individuals are no longer having to spend time preparing the back return. That's automated and that onus of work shifts on the sort of review and value add opportunities. Um, some of the larger clients we have who are spending sort of a significant amount of time calculating those adjustments have uh, saved all of it, again, through automation. And then again, the average uh, sort of average three to five days earlier uh, filing per period because there's more time for review and the automation has provided the bulk of the work. So I think we'll be really great now um, just, just to have a look at a little example of um, how we actually go about uh, pulling uh, that data in and what AlphaVac itself can actually do. So bear with me, I'll just pull that up for us. Okay. So 
So, so Alphabet uh, is um, our kind of solution to the, the that challenge. Uh, it initially started out as a kind of a, a solution for MTB to make sure that our clients were digitally linked and had all the abilities to do these uh, these sort of digital submissions. But what it very quickly has become is kind of a movement away from uh, the manual sort of manual approach to VAT and instead focusing more heavily on the benefits that it can bring by kind of bringing that into the 21st century, just like every other tax has been, well, most other taxes have been. Uh, you use our software for your CT tax, why wouldn't you use it for VAT? So let's get this screen sharing and we can get started. Um, so yeah, here's Alphabet. This is what it looks like. Um, we build in um, the entity structure, we build in the mapping, we build in all of that automation for you. So by the time that uh, you actually want to submit a return, all you need to do is really select the entity you're interested in for, upload the data, and you're ready to move on to your final analytics and review because the, the majority of the turns are automated for you. Um, so today we're going to have a really quick look at a sort of simple fully recoupable return. We can see how data gets pulled into it, how we do that, um, that automation of the mapping and then the analytics that we can look at at the end of the process. So I'm going to open up an entity here. This will then take me through to a sort of summary screen uh, where I can then see the current sort of nine box values. And currently you can see they're all blank. And that's because we need to upload the data to start that process. So we're going to pull um, all the reports from our ERP packages and accounting systems. Um, there's no particular format, there's no particular um, structure of data. You can see we can pull in CSV, XLS, XLSX, uh, and as I said, there's no template that needs to be managed. Uh, the entire mapping process is uh, entirely bespoke to your own sort of requirements. So whatever format is easiest for you to pull that data out into, often we find that it's just the data format that's already being used. We upload that into the software and that becomes the basis for the automation. Now, if we have any data cleansing steps that need to be done at this initial stage, um, things like blocking transactions, excluding transactions, or most commonly we see um, sort of corrections being posted, that can all be done here. Here we've got an intergroup transaction that's been excluded from the return. We've got some business entertaining that's being blocked. As I said as well, we might have some um, we might have some transactions where we need to kind of edit them and bring them in line because there's been an error on sort of the point of entry or on the classification, something like that. Uh, here, we, for example, we've got a travel and substance transaction, which is zero rated, it has a zero VAT amount, but it's got a standard rated tax code. So we'd want to edit that. We can open up the edit data screen. We can come in here, highlight the tax code, update it, provide a reason. And then save and update that row. And what you'll see is that change it changes the tax code for that transaction immediately. And this is particularly important as if you're calculating something like your reverse charge, your partial exemption further down the line, and these tax codes are important for determining them. Uh, this is obviously going to be a key step in the process, but ultimately it's just going to drive again towards accuracy and better a better return. Uh, so once we're happy with that, we can close the file and move on to the next step. Now, the next steps are the mapping steps, and these are uh, sort of finalized and created as part of that implementation. Uh, but they're really what drives the automation of the preparation. So this is what um, takes away that kind of manual work of getting the, those sort, that source data into the right nine boxes uh, and does it for you. So here you can see the first step is essentially just aligning uh, column headers between source data and between Alphabet. So we can pick out things like net and VAT descriptions correctly and also do any FX calculations. And next, uh, we have the map file section. And here we're simply applying rules and filters to the uploaded data uh, and feeding it into the correct boxes to ensure that it's doing the correct calculations. And uh, as part of the implementation process, we go through this with you. We do recalculations of prior returns, and we essentially make sure before you go live that the, the automation and the calculation is perfect. It's not something that you need to worry about on an ongoing basis. 
Now, once we've generated our nine box summary, you can see we've done that already. So we've been doing this for about five minutes now. We've already got our nine boxes. Uh, we're ready to start thinking about if there's any data checks that we need to do. So we see a variety of data checks being performed. We have three standard data checks within the software that our, most of our clients will use because they're the most common. Uh, and these are looking at sort of transactions outside the return period. Uh, so this is going to pick up any late invoices, things like that, but also flag up to you where maybe data has been uploaded incorrectly and it needs to be rectified. Looking at duplicate transactions. So here we can sort of highlight any duplicates and strip those out. Looking at uh, unexpected VAT rates. So this is where we might see sort of an inconsistent VAT rate or something with a, a VAT rate outside of that standard 25 or 0%. And then finally, outside of our standard checks, we've also got the ability to do custom checks. Uh, and as I said earlier, these are really bespoke to every client. Uh, we find clients will come to us with an Excel sheet and say, okay, look, here are the checks that we do as part of our process. And they might even say, actually, here are some of the checks that we wish we could do as well, but we don't have the time, we don't have the resources. Uh, so then often that becomes a large implementation effort to make sure that we can build in those bank of checks for them software automatically flags those transactions that meet the criteria and then it just becomes up to, just up to the client to determine what treatment they want to apply and so from this stage you can edit those transactions again you can block exclude do whatever you need to do to make sure it brings it in line with what you're happy with so once we've done all of that we can then start thinking about any manual adjustments we might need to post now those are relatively straightforward we still see quite a lot of these being done Things like fuel scale charge, um, uh, sort of capital goods schemes, cycle to work schemes, anything like that. Uh, and to post those, it's relatively straightforward. I'm just going to select where we want to post the adjustment to, give it a net and all that value, give it a description. So here I can say cycle to work scheme. And then finally, add supporting documentation. And the supporting documentation is really the key bit because this is what's going to be used to evidence the, adjust, the adjustment that you're making. You can see here I've uploaded an Excel file that contains all of the backing calculations and the adjustment itself. And this is really what HMRC are looking for to prove that it couldn't have been digitally linked and also just uh, so that you have that information for you as well. Now, finally, uh, before we look at uh, the reporting and the analytics, uh, the last part we have that's worth a sort of worth noticing is the reconciliation reports and these are just generated for any data changes that occur within the software uh, that we need to then uh, journal back into our ERP systems so you can see here I've got a breakdown of that transaction we edited earlier I can see the tax code change that we made and then I've got that full audit trail on the right hand side and this is one of those things that isn't picked up by Excel these audit trails that are so valuable as part of software. You can see exactly who made the change, when they made it, and their description for the change that was made. <clears throat> now, um, before we submit, one of the great things that we have and one of the benefits of not only software, but I guess MTD, um, is the requirement for this uh, fully sort of transactional digitally linked reporting. So we can drill down from our nine boxes here to the underlying transactional figures. I can select my box four, to go into my purchases uh, and I can see a breakdown of my individual purchase lines, my blocked inputs where I restricted the VAT element and even my adjustment as well. And I can then select any of these to then drill down into the line by line report. So here by selecting purchases I'll now go on to my line by line report of all the purchases that have been fed through in their full detail. But once we're happy with that we can hit ready to submit this will take us back to the summary screen. And from here, we can then finalize and submit the return to HMRC. <clears throat> so that then goes straight off to HMRC. Uh, we've then just completed our, our return. We uploaded the data, we went through data checks, and we completed it in sort of less than 10 minutes. And that now goes to HMRC. I've got my receipt. I can print that, save that, and obviously I can go back and view the return at any point I like. Uh, but now, once we've actually submitted the return, that doesn't that kind of stop the value per chain. Uh, we've still got a lot of benefits that come with that, that data now that it's gone off to HMRC and now that we can actually use it from an analytical perspective. 
Uh, but before we get to that, there's a few more tabs across here at the top that I think just are worth making that touching on. Uh, the first one we've got is our Documents tab. Now, this automatically stores the files uploaded as part of those manual adjustments. You can see here I've got the Cycle to Work uh, scheme. But primarily what this is trying to do is help tackle some of those key person dependencies. Uh, because what we can do here is we can upload any sort of data or process guidance around the VAT process. So whether it's um, what reports to export from those uh, ERP systems, whether it's how to calculate certain adjustments, or it's just internal controls and checks. They can all be saved here, uh, and they can help to reduce those key person dependencies if someone sort of drops off and someone has to pick it up in the middle of a project. Everything you need is in one place, and everyone's working from the same files. The entity summary houses some of the sort of high-level information about the entity, such as its VRN, but it's also where we have our data cleansing checks. So both our standard ones that can be enabled or disabled, or you can build in those custom ones. As I said, often we do this for a client, but the option's always available to them to make changes, to tweak them, or to add some more of their own if they want to at any time. We're also pulling down HMRC's payments and liabilities data from their portal. We wanted to make it easier for you to know exactly what your position with HMRC is at any time. You don't need to keep logging into HMRC's portal to check it. You can simply click into this tab on an entity or group by group basis to see exactly what your current liabilities or recent payments are and any outstanding result, outstanding amounts as a result. And then obviously you can say the date due, date paid, and the period it relates to. Now, finally, we've got our analytics. Uh, and this is really covering off, as I said, that comparability. We want to be able to look at our returns on a sort of quarter by quarter, month by month basis, and also compare to prior years. And so what this is doing is it's automating um, the data analytics for that. Uh, now in this return, I've just submitted one return, so we haven't really got much to compare it to. But if I hop to this entity here, you'll see that this is what it looks like in Alphabet after you've submitted a few returns worth of data. They all stack up on the left-hand side here. We can access them and look at the receipts for them. But more importantly, when we go into analytics, we can start comparing them. So here, I can look at any of my prior back returns and I can compare it to the previous period or the same period a year ago. And then within the first box here, I can have a really nice breakdown at um, sort of the movement of those nine boxes. So I can see both the value and the percentage change. It can help me monitor things like seasonal business or periods of exceptional expenditure. Um, or just to sort of prove to HMRC um, any sort of patterns or um, sort of uniqueness to the process uh, without having to spend too much time pulling all this data from prior years and prior quarters from Excel. It's all here ready for you uh, whenever you need it. Uh, beneath there, we've got two more reports as well. One on total about payable and then one on the data summary. And this goes through all of our transactions for the period, again, with that same comparison. And then the treatments we've applied, blocked, excluded, removed, manual adjustments. And from here, we're still maintaining that digital link as well. So if we want to investigate these in any more detail, we can hit that button. Here I'm looking at my block transactions. I hit it once more, and it takes me through to that line-by-line -line report with that full order tray on the right-hand side. So uh, that is uh, essentially how Alphabet works. That's some of the benefits that we've seen um, using it uh, and some of the benefits that have been brought from our clients. And so I think just before we sort of round off and sort of move to questions, um, just here's just a quick recap of what we've gone over. So one, sort of, we're seeing a lot of change, new working patterns are driving technology uptake. Um, we're seeing um, this across all businesses and all departments of all sizes. Um, there's a new appetite for technology uh, and it's, it's happening extremely fast. Uh, two, tax is ripe for digitization. Uh, this is looking to in, uh, flip that insight uh, and value uh, proposition. So they want to move away from time being spent on sort of manual processes and having highly skilled individuals spending time sort of preparing a VAT return when instead they could be looking at insight and value add opportunities. Uh, HMRC are constantly changing and constantly developing and digitizing. Um, existing VAT processes and sort of broader tax processes will struggle to keep up with HMRC's strategy if your reliance is heavily on Excel and sort of manual steps. Um, digitization not only kind of it brings that, that sort of benefit with HMRC, 
but also can improve um, the process as a whole, unsurprisingly. Through automation, we can cut time, we can improve accuracy, we can reduce errors, and as I said, we can free up time for much greater review and insight. And then finally, our experience has been one and the same. Um, through tax technology and through Alphabet, we found that huge benefits have been brought to businesses. There's been huge time saves, uh, sort of spend saves, uh, money saved on uh, incorrect uh, sort of submissions. Um, and the benefits that it's brought. So that's probably it for our time today.